Now we're going to talk about pitch. Most people think about pitch as being high or low. So to, to organize that, we have to be a little bit more specific. We can't just have high sounds, middle sounds, and low sounds um, because music is a lot more specific than that. It's more organized than that. So we use solfege. Again, solfege is any system of language that you use to label musical ideas. So these solfege probably look more familiar to you than the rhythm solfege. Um, so this organization of eight solfege, from bottom to top, we have do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. We call this a major scale. Major is what we call a tonality which means that when you hear a song that's sung in major, uh, it has a certain effect. There's a certain mood that is produced by the fact that you're singing a song based around Do. So Do could be any note that you want it to be. I might start here. If I call this Do and I sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, mi, re, do. There's a major scale. Maybe I want do to be lower. Do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. So you can see it doesn't matter which note I start on, and we call this movable do. The point is, is that the scale, the solfege, helps us to organize the notes in relation to one another. So no matter what note you start on, the relationship between do and re is always going to be the same. The same for re to mi and mi to fa, all the way up the scale. Now, the next thing to know about singing pitches is that there are two basic categories of movements. You can either move by a step or you can move by a skip. So if, for example, if I make this do, bum, 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 and I go do, re, do, what I did is I moved up a step to the very next note, next pitch, and back down. So that's stepwise movement. If I went do, re, mi, that's still stepwise mo movement because I went from do up to re and then re up to mi. So that was just two steps in a row. Now, if I decided to go do, mi, we call that a skip. So as soon as you skip over any of the notes in the scale, it becomes a skip. And that's important to know because for a lot of singers, finding notes that are skips are a little bit more difficult. The number one trick that you'll find yourself using when we're working with solfege and choir is from time to time I'll ask you to find a skip in your part. So for example, let's say that you're having trouble finding low do up to la. So a lot of people would look at Do and they'd look at La and say, okay, I know that those notes exist, but I, don't, I have no idea what La sounds like. Well, the trick is, even though it might not be written out for you like this, to use a scale to find out what La is. So if this is Do, you know what that sounds like. So instead of trying to guess up to La, you simply sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La. And there you go, you found La. So now you just jump back on down to Do, La, Do, and you've found your skip. So the scale is very, very useful when you're trying to figure out your music using solfege. You'll see that two, solfe two new solfege have just appeared. And we're going to use those two notes, just like we did with the scale to find the high La, we're going to move down from this do down to la. So do, ti, la. 
So if I sing an, a scale from la to la instead of do to do, we call that minor. La, ti, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do, ti, la. So you can hear that that has a slightly different sound than the major tonality, which is do to do. Um, you can come up with your own adjectives to describe it. A lot of people will say, you know, in the simplest terms, major, do to do, is happy, and la to la is sad. But they can be both used to reflect um, different emotions. Uh, it's not quite as simple as that. But if that's helpful to you, definitely just keep that in mind. The same principle of skips and steps applies to minor as well. So this is that la, and I sing la, ti, la. That's stepwise motion. If I sing la, ti, do, ti, la. Again, that's stepwise motion, but I'm just moving up a step and then up another step and back down. If I were to sing la, do, la, that would be a skip because I left out T. Okay. And again, let's do a similar exercise. If I wanted to go from La up to Fa, that's a big jump. And it might be hard for you to hear at first. So in order to figure out what that might sound like, you just sing the scale. La, ti, do, re, mi, fa. And then you just have to remember what la sounds like. La, fa. La, fa. And you're all set. So the last thing that I want to leave you with in this video is the fact that everything we've talked about with pitch and rhythm you've heard me perform. But ideally, as we start to work with the solfege in choir, you're going to do something called audiating. So when you hear me talk about audiate, what that means is hearing the sound in your head without making any sound physically. So some people will find it really tempting to hum their notes, um, but the fact of the matter is, is if you take the time to try to think about what a note is gonna sound like, before you sing it, um, it really helps to train your ear and train your voice to sing exactly the note that you'd like to sing um, right away without any kind of testing. So for example, if this was la, and I wanted to find re, see if you couldn't use the scale trick to find re in your head before I sing it. La. Ray. If that was the note you were singing in your head, you got it correct. Awesome. If not, practice. That's all there is to it. All I did in my head was I went la ti do re la re. This was an introduction to the rhythm and tonal solfege that we use in choir. I hope it was helpful. Um, and in our next video, we'll talk about what musical symbols go with these solfege. Here are some key terms that we went over in this video. If any of them look unfamiliar or you didn't quite understand some of them, you may want to go back and listen again. If you still have any questions, feel free to either ask in class, email me, or set up an extra help appointment. Happy practicing!